All right. Sure. Okay, Odet, um, we're recording now, so please go ahead. All right. So, um, good morning, um, everybody, those from Europe and maybe the U.S., and uh, good afternoon for those uh, from, the, uh, from the east side. Um, thank you for joining my presentation today, which is gonna be about uh, pipe condition assessment um, based on uh, acoustic, uh, continuous acoustic uh, leak detection. Um, some new uh, concept that um, we developed here um, in Aquarius, uh, which I wanna share uh, with you. Um, in terms of time, it's not going to be a long presentation. It's, um, it's going to be around 25 minutes, followed by um, a live demo of one of our customers where we applied um, some of the techniques and methods that, um, that I'm going to talk about. And afterwards, feel free to ask me um, any questions. So um, once again, thank you for joining. Um, my name, by the way, is Odette Fuchman. I'm the CEO of Aquarius Spectrum. Um, a few words about uh, Aquarius. Um, Aquarius was founded back in 2009. It's owned by Hutchison. Um, and we developed um, fixed and mobile acoustic sensors um, solutions to help uh, water utilities reduce their non-revenue water, prevent water pipe bursts, and optimize their pipe replacement. We already deployed thousands of sensors around the world, uh, and we've got about 18 technology patents in various uh, stages. This is our global uh, footprint. Our main markets uh, to date are, um, uh, we're based in Israel, so obviously Israel, the largest companies and the Israeli army, uh, but also uh, we work with the large, uh, largest water utilities in the US, and um, in the UK, and some various other projects, installation, and pilots that we have um, in various other locations around the world. Um, my, my presentation is going to focus on our fixed solution, um, as I want to speak about the pipe condition assessment. And one of the things that I want to start with is the benefit of continuous monitoring. Um, the first uh, benefit of having a continuous monitoring, it's, it, first of all, it's, it's much better and effective than, than having periodic surveys because uh, periodic surveys actually you lose, you lose sight of your network. You know what's happening now, but then if you don't do it often, uh, then once you walk out of a specific uh, DMA or a specific territory, then you lose sight of, um, of this area. And as you know, leak surfaced every day and even if you fix a leak um, normally others will follow uh, pretty soon um, and continuous monitoring allows you to to track that uh, on, a, on a daily basis um, it also provides more insights um, since it's much more sensitive um, and it allows more time to keep track in a specific area, it allows you to identify private leaks, interferences, what we call broken water meters, uh, broken hydrants, broken valves, anything that makes noise and shouldn't, with acoustic you will pick it up and it will come up on a screen either as a leak alert or as an in interference alert. Um, acoustic, having fixed sensors installed uh, is much more effective than during survey during time because uh, one of the benefits is that you can have the sensors running uh, in the middle of the night when there's no consumption, when there's no noise on the screen. So it, uh, it makes the system more, more efficient. Um, you need less human resources, obviously, because you need to, to send teams over just for verification and pinpointing only on specific uh, sections of the pipe where the uh, fixed uh, system would tell you that um, you have a point of interest um, rather than having a large team that go on and do surveys um, periodically. Um, 
the fact that you are content constantly monitoring allows you to pick up very very um, small leak as soon as they develop so um, that's another huge benefit you can actually um, you can actually fix them before they actually surface work optimization uh, again one of the benefits of fixed solution is that it allows to prioritize and to also provide probability. We also provide the estimated size of a leak, so you can uh, send your team to those that are biggest, uh, the biggest leaks uh, first before you attend to a uh, small one, or you can keep the small one until they come big. Um, was that a question? I mean, I, I hear another noise. Um, I, I, if it's possible, let's let's keep the questions uh, at, to the end of the presentation. Um, also, fixed acoustic sensors are more sensitive because you can install them. Normally, surveys are done above ground, going from one hydro to another. One of the benefits of being uh, of using a fixed acoustic sensor is they can you can install them below ground, and then anything that is below ground, closer to the pipe, uh, actually is a little bit more sensitive than tracking noise uh, above the uh, on above hydrants. History, you can keep track of an area, uh, monitor it for a while, see that the leak is growing and then t attend to it once it's, uh, it gets to the right size or if you don't have enough budget to, to go for every leak. Um, and bottom line, it's high value for money if you compare it to surveys, intrusive technologies or satellites. Um, in a nutshell, acoustic, um, we normally install the sensors on the pipeline. Uh, in the Aquarius case, we need about 2.5 sensors per kilometer, two, three sensors per kilometer. Um, as I said, we record the level of noise um, and the sound on the pipes each night when it's very, very quiet, two, three o'clock in the morning. In our case, we take 20 seconds of acoustic measurement. You can actually download and listen to it if you're a leak uh, detection specialist. And if we hear the level of the same noise coming from the same location three, four, five nights uh, in a row, then we produce an alert on the map for the water utility. Um, it looks like this. On the left side, we categorize the leaks by ABC. A, it's a big size leak, B, it's a medium size, and C, it's a small one. Each leak has its own ID, the date it was detected, the status of it, was it fixed, was it identified, should it be fixed, uh, suspected locations, various uh, statuses that we manage together with the customer itself, the address of the leak, and there's a lot of comments that um, the team can put along the way. On the right hand side, you can see the location of the leak. This is um, uh, the project that I'm going to show you later on, which is um, uh, Suez, New Jersey, right at, just across the Hudson River from Manhattan. You're probably uh, familiar with that area. Uh, you can see the leaks on the map, and uh, those red dots or white dots are actually a noise sample as well. On our case, every sensor also records the noise around it. So, uh, and the blue, the blue points are actually good correlations. If you zoom in into a leak, um, it will show you the distance of the leak from one of the sensor. This is 144 feet from sensor number one. Uh, and the intensity, intensity is the amount of energy generated one while uh, in, during the correlation that allows us to estimate roughly the size of the leak. Um, you can see that there is a good correlation. Um, we are doing correlation on all the frequencies, so you can see exactly which frequencies has the correlation. It provides us a lot of more information on the leak itself, on the nature of the leak, and the fact that it hits always in the same place. So this is a very good um, leak found between uh, two sensors. What um, makes Aquarius, uh, uh, one of the things that makes us uh, um, Special is the fact that we automatically correlate each night. And as I said, we 
are correlating on every frequency. So that uh, makes our sensors more sensitive and we can find leaks that are below the ambient noise, below the background noise. Um, um, as you can see, this is the background noise, the, uh, the green part and the bottom line. It's the same when there, there is a leak and the same when there is no leak. So because this, this leak is actually below the background noise, very, very small one uh, with a very distinct correlation, very distinctive uh, pipe. Uh, spike. When there's no spike, it means there's no uh, no correlation. Doesn't mean there's no noise. There's no leak. And in terms of technology, um, in our case in Aquarius, we support all five materials and all diameters. We basically have above ground sensors, below ground sensors. Uh, we have multi sensors that also breaks down pressure transients. Now get to that in the next slide. Every every Sensor has got a SIM card inside. We support 3G, 4G, depends where we work around the world. Uh, very easy to install. We can install 30 sensors per day. Uh, and our vibration sensors can go up to 24 inches. So very, very sensitive uh, technology. For PVC, HDP, and large pipe, we use hydrophones. And we have a battery life that is designed to last five years. And of course, everything we do on the cloud is secured. Um, this is an example of uh, we're monitoring all the large pipes of the city of Tel Aviv. We're talking about 36 inch and concrete pipes. Uh, we do it with our multi sensor, which combines a hydrophone and a pressure sensor. And whenever there is a leak, the hydrophone would, uh, would pick it up. As you can see in this example, there was a 11 uh, liters per minute leak that we've managed to pick up a signal. You can see that here, uh, a good correlation where the distance between the sensors were 1.2 kilometers. Uh, once there is a pressure transient, the hydrophone would trigger the pressure sensor to start recording 500 times a second. And then we can catch those pressure transients that if those pressure transients are not uh, dealt with, uh, can break can break the pipe, obviously. So it's very important to uh, to look for those specific points that has recurring pressure transient, recurring water hammers that uh, eventually can break the uh, can break the pipe. Now let's talk about pipe condition assessment. Um, since we established uh, what acoustic can do for leak detection. Um, the value of uh, pipe condition assessment, of course, it's huge. It prevents catastrophic breaks that can cost dozens of millions of dollars, as you will see in the next slide. Um, if you have a good pipe condition assessment program and you want to change a foot of uh, a pipe, fit of pipe, it will cost you around $500, okay? Um, if you do it after catastrophe, that can ramp up to half a million dollar, okay? Um, this is why it's, uh, it's good to have a uh, preventive maintenance pipe condition assessment uh, uh, project that once a year, uh, it's important for a water utility to review the condition of its pipe and to replace one, two, three percent, depends on the budget that it has, uh, and not wait for catastrophe. Um, optimize, if you do that, it can optimize your maintenance budget. Um, and um, replace pipes with very high break rate. I mean, usually 80% of the breaks happen with 10% of the pipe uh, due to stress, corrosive oil, uh, soil, uh, electricity that can uh, create uh, uh, pits, and etc. cetera. Um, it's important to understand the failure problems. As I mentioned before, um, some can come with um, pressure transient can break the pipe, recurring pressure transients in a specific location. Um, electricity can have uh, speed up corrosion. Uh, soil, uh, a lot of things can, uh, so it's important to know the failure uh, itself and analyze it because that way you can deal with the, the problem itself. Um, sometimes it will be um, just, um, you can fix the leak, sometimes it will, replace, you need to replace the whole pipe. Sometimes it's just 
a specific section. Um, and sometimes you'll need to do cathodic protection um, or other method to maintain the health of the uh, pipe. So it's important to analyze those failure modes. Uh, the problem is that without good pipe condition assessment process, uh, replacement is not done by real condition of the pipe, but rather by age or number of bursts. Um, when I mean burst, I mean breaks that actually go up to the surface. As a result, high portion of the budget is spent on replacement of pipes in good condition, and remaining poor condition pipes continue to generate ongoing failure costs. Um, this is an example some of you might be familiar with a 30 uh, inch pipe breaking in uh, uh, the University of California in Los Angeles back in 2014. It was a 30 inch uh, uh, steel pipe that it took four hours to isolate. In that time, 18 million gallons of water were lost. It took a lot of hours to repair and eventually the bill ramped up to total cost of 36 million. Um, remember I talked about half a million per foot? That's the half a million per foot if um, pipe condition is neglected. Uh, the current methods, um, and I've just highlighted a few of them, the main ones, there are others. Um, so those water utilities that don't have a pipe condition assessment project would probably replace their old pipes first, uh, which are sometimes in good shape, or based on history of repairs. Um, I know that in some area, some water utilities, if they have two breaks per 300 feet, it will justify replacing, replacement of the section, assuming there's more unknown uh, background leaks. Uh, this is a very limited tool, as most of the holes and leaks do not surface. They're what we call background leaks. A-line inspection, very intrusive, very expensive, can analyze only a small pipe section at a time and there's active measurement of velocity that doesn't support all pipe materials, provides an average velocity without showing the location of the problem, not effective when the problem is in small sections that uh, failed. There's other methods like ultrasound, I would not go into that, but these are the main methods uh, used today. Um, I found a report from the Water Research Foundation highlighting the different methods, and um, as you can see here, uh, acoustic monitoring is one of those most uh, effective methods uh, for pipe condition and assessment um, using that report. Now let's talk, since we talked about the background, uh, let's talk about the Aquarius concept. So what we try to do here is integrate history. We can't ignore history of breaks. Um, but we wanted to combine this with current event analysis of many, many parameters that we collect over time. So it's uh, big data analytics of history and current pipe repairs. Our um, solution would highlight and would enable the uh, water utility to replace and preauthorize the condition rather um, based on the condition rather than age. Uh, and will save millions by extending the life of existing assets and optimize replacement decisions. It enables focus on replacing specific sections. You don't have to, uh, sometimes you don't have to replace the entire pipe, but just a small section of the pipe. And the method that we use is, we do take the history of repairs, uh, anything that the customer can allow us and provide us, um, along with the acoustic leak detection that we apply on its different uh, parameters and the leak evolution analysis, which is unique to our system. We can actually monitor and track down the growth rate of a leak. Uh, a lot of the leaks would stay constant. The hole would not, uh, would not evolve. But in some, uh, if the condition of the pipe is in poor condition, you would see that the hole size is growing very, very fast. And I'll show you uh, a couple of examples. We developed a scoring system that um, allows us to track the condition of the pipe and based on number of leaks, based on a lot of parameters, growth rate of leaks, uh, how close the leaks are to one another, um, and different soil and, and other elements that we use um, 
in our big data analytics that eventually will produce a number. Um, as you can see on this diagram, um, the, the severe or problematic sections are normally uh, in around less 1% of the network uh, would be in bad shape. The others would be in various stages of shape, but, but uh, from three projects that we run so far, which is not a lot, we can already see that the majority of the pipes would be actually in good shape. But we're looking for those 1% that uh, we need to attend to. Um, when we do um, work with uh, a customer, um, as we track down and we, um, when we apply the condition assessment model that we develop, you will see all the history of repair in a specific area. Um, and in this example, you can see a five leaks on an H, uh, H steel pipe uh, in a five meter section over a period of 18 months developed. Uh, that gives us a lot of information on that specific section being a bad section. Growth rate of leak. Sometimes we would highlight a, a pipe that has only one uh, leak, but the leak is growing very, very fast. As you can see, this leak was identified by the system in 23rd of December, 2018. And by the time the customer fixed it, it ramped up to, um, in February 3rd, it almost doubled or tripled the size of it. Um, so these are quite unique, specific uh, um, leaks that can be found on a very poor condition pipes. We don't just stop there, but we analyze the entire network and eventually we'll highlight the magnitude of the problem, uh, how many pipes are in good shape, how many in poor shape. Um, we'll highlight the problematic sections, we'll highlight them in red, as you saw, and we'll provide a table showing those red sections, we'll, what is the red section made of? Uh, and I'll show you that in the live demo uh, soon. We also developed a field report that whoever crew that goes out to fix the leak, um, we asked them to fill out a lot of information on the leak so we can add it to our big data analytics. Where was the leak? What's the correct size? How many water loss? Where is the, what is, what's the event of the problem? Is it in the joint? Is it on the pipe itself? Is it in the outside? Is it in the inside? A lot of anything that the customer can share with us will help the system be better uh, since we can identify recurring problems. Um, in Israel, for example, we're building an underground train that has sending a lot of electric currents uh, that is breaking pipes. So if we can identify an area where that happened in several locations, we can try and find out and, uh, and, and manage that and fix the source of the problem that will help this entire DME, DMA be in good shape. Um, so the more information we get from the crew that fixed the leaks helps us get better. Um, if I compared it to inline inspection, which is normally inspects one small section, then Aquarius we normally analyze the entire network. Um, inline inspection would provide a, provide a snapshot that detects a hole in wall thickness corrosion pits. Continuous monitoring detects leaks anything above two millimeters. We'll pick it up. Uh, inline inspection supports all pipe materials, but in terms of diameters, normally it's going to be uh, pipes uh, larger than six inch pipes. We, uh, with our technology, support all pipe uh, sizes as well. Uh, it requires special insertion uh, installation when you use inline inspection. On our uh, technology is quite external. As you saw, it's installed on the pipe itself. Nothing intrusive. Um, inline inspection is very, uh, is very, very expensive while uh, acoustic monitoring our system in particular is affordable. It's between six to 10 thousand dollars per mile for five years depending on the quantities. So that's just uh, uh, wrapping up the presentation itself. I'd like to share with you how it looks like in real life. I hope everybody can see the screen. 
Um, so this is um, this is Suez, New Jersey. In um, okay, this is um, uh, Suez, New Jersey. Um, the green dots is all the repairs that um, were found in the last four years. Um, some was picked up uh, before um, the customer installed the Aquarius on site and some after. Uh, we placed them on the map um, and you can see on the left side, you can see all of them and the dates that they were uh, detected and what is the address. If I zoom in, you will see red sections that uh, we highlight specific points of interest that has a lot of leaks close to one another or fast developing ones. Um, some would be, as you see, you can see the scoring that we provide each, um, each, um, each pipe itself. As you see it from, from the macro, uh, from looking from outside, it looks like there's a lot of leaks everywhere and everything is bad. But actually, if you zoom in, you can see that we're actually highlighting just specific section and not all of them. Uh, and that's, that's the benefit of, um, and this is uh, a project that we installed 600 uh, sensors, 300 below ground and 300 above ground. Um, if I click on the analyzer, it will give me this uh, nice dashboard that will summarize what we're seeing. Uh, and you can see here the number of leaks repair back in 2016. And then in 2018, um, the customer installed uh, Aquarius and you can see the number of repair ramping up um, to 78 in 2018 to 93 in 2019. Uh, altogether, this repair, by the way, saved um, Suez, New Jersey, about a billion gallons of water and managed to reduce their non-revenue water by 9%. Um, if you look on the severity of the problem in that specific customer, you see, can see that most of the pipes are actually in good shape. Uh, and I've sat down with, uh, by the way, with the engineering team and the operation teams in, uh, in Suez, New Jersey, presented those findings. Everything was that I'm showing you was backed up. Um, now, the high, um, the red sections, uh, which is 1.3 um, mile from this entire uh, network, um, this is the problematic section that the customer needs to um, put an effort in and replace those specific sections. And we tell them exactly which one of them. Um, some would be very old one, cast iron, six inch, four inch pipes, but as you can see here, some would be surprisingly coming from 2017. As a matter of fact, if we analyze the entire network, and this is the bottom table that analyzes the entire network, if you look on uh, the number of <coughs> repairs per, uh, the size of specific pipes, you can see that the majority of the problems is actually from a 1948 cast iron six inch pipe, but also from 2017 ductile iron six inch pipe. That if I click on any specific point here, it will take me directly to this specific section and will show me the exact uh, location of the, uh, of the problem. Um, there's a lot of good information that engineering would like here uh, that uh, a lot of slice and dice that shows you specific year placement year and you can tell that in 2017 they had a very bad contractor that year that didn't lay the, the pipe so well. This is why they have a lot of issues with that uh, specific pipe. Um, but it really gives you a background of all, um, of all your pipe sections uh, and analyzes the entire, the entire network. I think I've um, said my piece. Um, so, I will look on the, if you have any questions or want to see <clears throat> anything on the, um, on the system, let me know. Let me open the chat so I can see your questions. Where is that?
I owed it. We have one question already. I don't know if you've got the chat open. Yeah. Hopefully. Does the sensor spacing stay the same even when the damage increases? Okay, that's a good question. Um, um, so the sensor spacing is actually um, different from depending on the pipe material, obviously, and the diameter. This is one of the things we do when we plan uh, when we plan a project, uh, we look for, we get the GIS from the customer um, and um, based on the GIS and based on the installation, possible installation points that the customer has, whether it's below ground or above ground, we uh, decide which sensors to use and which uh, spacing. Um, if I get back to my presentation, I think in the technology, uh, yeah, if you look here, you can see that the spacing of the vibration sensor can be between 300 meters to 500 meters. By the way, we had a project in, um, in Australia, if it's a straight line in the bushes uh, without any um, without any junction, we can go even 1.2 kilometers between the uh, between accelerometers. So it really depends on the topology and the um, the diameter. Uh, why the inline inspection is so expensive? Ex so expensive? Um, that's a, that's a question for um, for companies that actually um, do that. Um, as as you saw, I mean. I, I'm not, um, uh, don't get me wrong, the wrong impression that I'm speaking against inline inspection. I think um, um, when we highlight those section with acoustic, uh, with our technology, those red section, if the customer has extra budget and wants to verify before he replaces that red section, um, he can bring the inline inspection, but just do it on those red section that we highlight. So we see them as actually it's a complementary solution, but as you as you know, it it's got its um, its cost, and it can work on specific um, specific uh, areas, specific of one kilometer uh, section. I'm talking about either smart ball or Pika or anything that you have to put um, in line. You can't do that for the entire network. If you've got hundreds of miles, you can't do inline inspection on all of it. This is why it's 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 um, should be limited only to to those uh, specific sections that you have suspicions. Um, do the transient sensor determine the location of the cause of the transient? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, since we um, spread our multi sensors across the entire pipe, uh, we can see exactly where is the pressure sensor, pressure transient happening, where and where it's, uh, and, and through that, uh, finding the location and the source of that uh, specific valve that is causing that uh, pressure transient. Um, does the sensor spacing stay the same for different pipe material? Um, again, I, I think I've answered that, um, for example, um, if you, for asbest cement, cast iron, we need about two, three sensors per kilometer. For asbest cement, we would need uh, around four sensors. Um, PVC, polyethylene pipes, you would use hydrophones, but the spacing will be two, three sensors per kilometer. Um, and uh, large pipe, we managed to get correlation, good correlation from 1.2 kilometer, as you saw. Any reason why the Aquarius technology hasn't been deployed in Africa? <laughs> um, we tried, believe me, we tried. We've got a local partner there. Um, and for some reason, we find it very hard to, to work there. We, we do have a, a project, a small project with Rand Water at the moment. It's more of a pilot. Um, but uh, one of the things that we need in order to work, and it's not just about Africa, but it's it's all across the world. We need um, good GIS. We need the customer to know exactly uh, where his pipes buried, what is their diameter, what is their 
material. Um, we need to have good running water 24 seven. We need to have good pressure. Anything above uh, three bars of water pressure. Below that, it will be very hard for acoustic uh, to find leaks. We can work with hydrophone, but hydrophone gets the vibration from the water itself and the installation is not that uh, trivial. Um, uh, so this is part of the reason why um, the technology hasn't been broadly adopted in Africa uh, yet, but I believe we will get there. Any more questions from anyone? I have had um, a private question, Oded, which was, would you be willing to share the presentation slides to people? Yeah, sure, no problem. So people would have to email you directly and then you can send the slides to them? Yeah, since I'm guessing that some of my competition is there, um, I, I might... I might share a, limit, a limited deck, but uh, yeah, if they can privately send it, send me an email, I, I'll be happy to uh, share at least some of it uh, with everybody. Yeah, so can you show the slide with your email on it again? Yeah, um, it's very easy. It's uh, odad at Aquarius Spectrum. Okay, and there's, um, a, there's a couple more questions come in while we were chatting. Okay. How can this technology work in intermittent water supply? Um, I, it, it cannot. I mean, um, if, if um, water is supplied in the middle of the night when people are, are sleeping, then and there's a good uh, pressure in the pipe, then we can probably find leaks. But normally in, in places when it's uh, intermittent uh, water supply, they tend to supply when people need it during the daytime which um, acoustic is not that effective during the daytime. This is why, um, but we have, um, we have um, a mobile solution, a mobile leak detection technology that you can, uh, that is massively uh, uh, applied and working very good in the UK market that you can, you can, you can use uh, during uh, those running times of water feel free to approach me personally. And I, I didn't want to share that information in this uh, presentation, but I'll, I'll, I'll share it with you um, when we speak. Um, what are the failure modes parameters used for pipes uh, severity uh, score? Okay. Um, of course I can disclose everything, but um, we do look for specific patterns. Uh, we do look for obviously number of leaks, how, um, how often do they happen, how close they're one to another, how fast a leak develops. And this is something that is specifically unique to our solution. Since we can estimate the size of the leak, we can see that the leak is growing from being a small leak to a big size leak. Um, we can see uh, recurring patterns of the fault itself. We analyze the faults. Uh, was it uh, was it based on a, a crack because of a pressure transient, or was it because of electricity etching the um, metallic uh, pipes? So we look for the nature of the failure, and we compare that to other uh, failures that happen in the same pipe. Um, we analyze all of that in order to provide our analysis. And judging by the three customers that already applied that, um, Suez, New Jersey, Tel Aviv, and another big customer here in Israel, um, all the information that we, the reports that we provided, engineering backed it up. So I think um, even though it's kind of a statistical tool, it's got a lot of uh, essence to it. Um, any more questions? Okay, I think, I think that's it. Um, right. Any last questions? Uh, thank you very much, Oded. That was very informative. And um, if anybody needs the slides, they can contact uh, Oded directly on the email, which is on the screen now. Absolutely. Feel free to uh, reach me out. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thanks a lot, Oded. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, everybody, for, for joining us.